Earth Under Seeds, operatives will be entering into an insertion point, trying to complete the scenario's objective, and then leave through the extraction point. Players lose if the entire team is down, or in the event they need to draw another threat card, which is basically the timer of the game, and they cannot, they lose the game. In addition to that, they can also lose if they run out of enemy miniatures. Let's start set up by creating the enemy display. The enemy display is all of these large cards detailing the stats of the enemies you will be facing in the current mission. You will grab these all out and lay them out in initiative order. Initiative order appears in the top left corner, starting with the lowest initiative and moving away to the highest initiative. The green enemies are your regular enemies and the red ones are your elite enemies. You will then find all the spawn cards corresponding to those enemy types and shuffle them into the corresponding decks. So we have an enemy deck of all the regulars and elites. Then we'll grab all the threat cards, shuffle them up. And also while we're at it, we'll go and set up the armory cards. We have Zethan uh, arm weapons and items here, and then your regular allied weapons and al items here as well. So shuffle all those decks. This is the escalation track. This board keeps track of the overall status in the game. Important thing to look at is the top area here. This is where investigation tokens will be placed. When this fills up with investigation tokens, the different various effects will happen, and then at the very end, the alarm will go off. Right now, we won't put anything up there, but throughout the game, we'll be adding tokens to that. Here's the spawn pool, which will have blips. These are enemies that will appear and spawn on the map and wander around. We won't do anything for that in the setup here. But the important thing we need to look at is the threat level. The threat level is the number of operatives you're playing in the game. In this playthrough, I'm going to play with two operatives, so I'll put the threat level at two. And what this does is various cards and effects will reference the threat level via the symbol, and then you just need to look at what value you're on to do the player scaling effects. There's also objective spot here and valor pool spot. We'll get those later, but basically objectives uh, you can gather uh, from the board. We won't see any of them in this playthrough. And team valor pool, you'll get various bonuses for doing awesome stuff. This is one of the player dashboards. This is Olivia Mad Doc Moss. She's the science officer, as indicated in the top left corner. A couple of things to note about this card. We, here are the stats for different skill checks you might do. First one is the attack. Second one is your defense. This is science. And finally, you have your stealth, a covert skill. And then we have different areas around the board for your equipment. So up top, you have your bag. This is where you can hold all your equipment you're not currently using. You have a discovery space. If you find some alien tech, you need to understand how it works. Your two hands, you can hold different items in your hands, of course. And you have three utility items on the bottom you can hold. And finally, one slot for armor. And just in that, that you see, do see your starting focus. The focus tokens will be used for various effects in the game. So in this case, when we started with two science tokens, some of the effects you can do are powering your cards. So each card has a top half and bottom half. You can spend one of these focus tokens to trigger the bottom ability at the time you're playing it. You can also discard one of these focus tokens to upgrade a die roll of that skill test. So if I want to do a science test and I want to upgrade one of my dice from a white to red, I can also discard a focus token from that. And lastly, you can refocus, meaning you can discard any focus token to draw a card. You also have a space in the middle area for the negative conditions. Hopefully you don't get any of those in the playthrough, but we'll find out. <laughs> we probably will. In the middle down here, we have your Overwatch spot. So you can put it in the inactive position or active position if you're in Overwatch mode. And what that means is if you're ready to ambush or attack enemies, you do that out of turn. So we'll put that in an active spot. And then the important part is the available and exhausted location on the right here. That is where you're gonna be putting all your action tokens. Each character in the game starts with three order tokens and three movement tokens on their available slot. So throughout the game, in order to do an order or a movement, move it from active to exhausted. And later on, during the round refresh, we'll be able to remove move those back into available. However, your recover value is three. That means you can move three of these from the exhausted to available. So we do need to keep track of how many we're using. And we can push ourselves hard one turn, but it might take a little while to come back to our starting state. This is the other character we'll be playing the game, and that is Billy Nomate Sniper. So you can see his stats and his starting focus. However, you can multi-hand in this game, but you can also play as a squad. So what that means you can flip the board over, and now you can see that they have an additional ability. In this case, we have an ability called Shot, which is a reaction ability once per round before making a non-area of attack range attack. 
attack deals plus two damage. And so what this means is instead of playing normally with two, a deck of card per character, we can play without a deck of card and instead we get this cool ability in place of the deck. So in this playthrough, I will be playing Billy as a squad member. Each character comes with their own pair of starting items. And you can tell that by the backs of the cards. So these are Billy's starting items. He's gonna come with, well, big surprise, a sniper rifle, right? <laughs> What's a sniper without his rifle? So he'll be starting with a Prowler, which is a two-handed weapon, has a range attack. And you can see that the first one means that if I do an attack action, I get an additional white die. The next uh, icon is one, two, three. So that's the range. And then we have the number of wounds it does if, after you hit, and then how much noise it, it makes. So this is what he'll be starting with. In addition, over here, this symbol means it's an upgrade. So depending on the weapon type, you can actually upgrade the weapon. So this one is a two-handed weapon, so it can have a maximum of two upgrades. So one of the upgrades will be the sniper scope. And this has to be attached to a two-handed weapon. So when he attacks with it, it'll gain accuracy. I'll show sure what that means in the playthrough. And then as a reaction, at the end of the opter phase, if there are no enemies in line of sight to you, go into Overwatch for free, which is an awesome ability. I love that ability. However, we're not done yet. Because we're playing with the Breach and Clear strategy, it gives us additional equipment cards. This is the Breach and Clear equipment cards. There's a couple of them. So we're going to give our sniper this laser sight. So this is going to give him his attacks attached with this will ignore cover, which is going to be huge. Yeah, laser sight with a sniper. All right. We will also give Billy these cards as well. He'll give him some armor, which he'll hopefully not need, and concussion grenades and frag grenades. We do have another set of assault armor, which we'll give to Olivia, our scientist. But Olivia has her own set of cool items. So she has a database uplink pad, which is really, really nice. After making any check, discard a science card or a focus token to add a success to the result. And then she has her silence pistol, which will attack for range zero to two for one wound. So this is what Billy looks like all set up. And here is Olivia. And finally, we set up the map board. So here's what the mission 2A extraction is, looks like. So there's a lot of things going on. We do have these blips all over the place. These blips are known whereabouts of enemies, but we don't know exactly who they are. So we've got a number of them around the board. There's different rooms and hallways that are in. We have these door tokens, which all start closed, and you can then flip them to the open side. Uh, we also have different points. We have the insertion points, which you can start the game in. In this case, we do have two of them. So we can choose to divide the party or keep everyone together. We have one extraction point to leave the map. In addition to that, you do will see some other things. We'll see some spawn tokens here. So these are portals. So we have a, a two here and a number one over there up in the corner. And that's where enemies are gonna come from. We also have technicians on the board. So this is a control room with technicians in it. Technicians are monitoring the camera system. So we have one camera here aiming down this hallway. Another camera down here in the corner, whoop, right down here, aiming down this hallway. And so they will be monitoring those cameras. We can potentially disable the cameras or take out the technicians and we don't have to worry about them triggering the alarm with those cameras, what they might see. We also have an armory down here. This is where we can get additional gear. We can get allied gear and then Zethan gear, the alien species. Mission 2A extraction. Close your mouths and open your ears, people. We've got a small window to complete your next mission. The data you recovered shows that a physicist named Dr. Rebus it's being held by the Zethan for unknown reasons. However, while the intel showed us the location of Dr. Rebus, the enemy knows we have this information, and they're not just going to sit still waiting for us. We've intercepted communication that indicates they plan on moving the prisoner to a new facility, which means she may be lost to us forever if we don't move fast. You need to get in and secure the prisoner before they take her to who knows where. Since we have to be quick, there's no time for anything cute, so you're going in guns first. Don't get too cocky, though. There are reports that the prisoner is being guarded by a particularly nasty creature called a mind killer. Watch your six. So in this mission, we have a special patrol blip. That's what this blue blip is doing right over here. This blip represents the prisoner and her escort team. So the target zone for this blip is going to be spawn point one all the way up at the end of the hallway right up there. And basically what's going to happen is at the end of every round when enemies move, this blip will move two spaces closer to that destination. So it's going to follow the hallway all the way around. And if this blip ever 
moves all the way to the end and finally gets into this portal, we lose the game as the prisoner has escaped with the escort. So that's what we're trying to prevent from happening. Our goal is to stop that from happening, take out the escort team, rescue the prisoner, and bring the prisoner to the extraction point. Before you start a mission, you need to reveal a condition card. These cards are going to change basically how the mission plays out. Could affect just setup, could affect it throughout the game. They're kind of random, but they're always bad. So let's look at what's going to change in this mission. So in this mission, we have unexpected circumstances. Setup. Immediately before beginning the mission, draw and resolve a threat card. So we'll do that right now. So here's our threat card. Let's see what it is. Flip it over. We get... Uh, because the alarm's not going off, because we just started, of course, or not even started. Uh, sensor sweep. Each operative must either discard a covert focus or place an investigation token in their zone. So unfortunately, because <laughs> we only start with one of those to focus tokens, it doesn't matter. We can only have one of those investigation tokens in our zone. We'll just have to start with an investigation token in our zone. So here's a round of play summary. First thing you normally do is the refresh phase, which you skip on the first round. So this is where you will recover your actions. You can manipulate your deck a little bit, your hand. Uh, you'll draw a threat card, which is an event card, and then you move the on point marker. That's who is making the decisions for the team. And then we'll move on to your operative phase as we take all your actions. Actions you can do are movement and orders. Movements you can move, disengage, take cover, and orders you can do lots of things. You can act, attack, discover, overwatch, pick, pick up, plan, revive, sabotage, search, and trade or reorganize. I won't go through all these actions right now, but as they come up to play through, I'll describe what they do. And after you take your actions, you will do the enemy phase. So the enemies will activate and we will check for alarms. And then we'll do escalation phase, which will spawn, do some cleanup, and then we'll rinse and repeat with the refresh phase. So we'll skip the refresh phase this time and we'll go straight to the operative phase. Okay, let's start the game. We put our operatives here at this insertion point, but we do need to add an investigation token there as well. That's because of our condition. We had to draw that threat card for the sensor sweep. So they know we're there, but th the nice thing about this mission specifically is there's only one patrol token, the special one. And it's special because it does not go to the investigation token normally. It's gonna go straight to the exit. It, they're more worried about getting that scientist out because they know we're in the area. <laughs> so we need to stop them. But I put that token there just in case because there's a chance that maybe these other blips on the board may become patrol tokens, or maybe we'll add one to the game. In that case, they would head towards that location. So usually the first thing you do each round is the refresh phase, but we specifically skip that the first round of the game. So we'll go right to the operative phase, and that's when we take our actions. So this is where we can play cards by hand and spend any of those available actions like movement and order tokens to achieve our end. First thing I wanna do is use this support token. The support token you use if you're using any squads on your team. So this will let me flip it over and each operative may gain a focus token or draw X cards where X is the number of squad members. So because we have one squad member, we can have each operative gain one focus token, which I think I'll do right now. So I'll flip it over and we'll get that back at the start of the next turn anyway. I'm gonna give Billy one of these attack tokens and I'll actually do the same thing for a science officer. Next thing I'll do is I'll spend one of these movement tokens to move two spaces. Okay, let's have Billy move two spaces. One, he'll open the door for free. You do that for once for free on in a movement action. The second movement, move right into this spot. Now, now that we're here, we do have line of sight to this blip. So we need to spawn that enemy. There's also a camera here. However, cameras cannot see anything in their space. Basically, you're underneath the camera. If I would move one space to the left, that camera would see us, and then we'd have to worry about these technicians up in the control room being able to spot us. But as long as we stay here, we're safe. So let's go ahead and see what this blip topic token is. Okay, let's see what we get. Flip it over, and we find Vormark Grun. So these are humans helping the aliens. So this is a spawn event down here. Call for help if the alarm is ringing. Each patrol within threat. We have threat two. Two zones move one zone. But fortunately, uh, the alarm's not going off, so we can ignore that. But we do need to spawn the Vormark Grunts. Here's the Vormark Grunts card. So up here's the initiative, initiative one, spawn two. So we'll spawn two figures to represent this unit. They have attack of three, which is a blaster, range zero to two. And then they have motivated through fear, gain plus two attack if there's any Zethan, which are the aliens, in the zone. Fortunately, there's just them. Defense of four, so in order to hit them, we have to get 
to reach the target of four or greater. And then they have two perception, two movement, and one health. So fortunately, these guys are pretty weak, but let's see if our sniper can't deal with them right away. Now, the first thing that happens is we have the option of doing a stealth check. What that means is we can do our covert dice roll and compare it to their perception value, which is currently two. If we beat that, they don't see us. However, because my plan is to take them out anyway, I'm not gonna bother doing that because as soon as you shoot a guy, they're aware of you. So instead, I'm gonna choose to fail the stealth check and they are become surprised. So what that means is if we do not eliminate them at the end of this round, they will ring the alarm. So we really need to take them out. But I think that's okay because I will spend one order from Billy to do an attack. So let's go ahead and roll those dice. If you look up here, it's four attack plus the one for the sniper rifle. So he'll be rolling five white dice to target one of these units. Okay, let's see if we can do it. Here we go. Roll the, oh yeah, that's an awesome roll. Oh, sniper's on target. So that's way more than four. So we got six in there. It's good enough to do one of the wounds from his rifle. That is gonna take out one of these units. So I'm gonna try to finish up the job. I just need four hits again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually exhaust this card to gain a black focus die. The black focus die, I will get a focus token out of this. Now, the key is I already have three focus tokens, but I'm gonna roll this anyway to see if what I roll, I would prefer to keep than what I already own. So it's gonna exhaust that and roll these dice and see if we can get another four. All right, so I got a defense token, which I don't really care about, but I just wanna see what I could get. I get five successes, that's another hit, and that will take out the last grunt. So what that means we take the flip token and we can discard it. And then the surprise token becomes an investigation token. So next time a patrol enters that spot, we'll add it to the escalation track. Also, we get a bonus, we get to draw a token from the Valor pool and it looks like we get this one. This is a focus token, a wild one. So it could count as any focus token we want. So what we can do is put that valor token right here into the valor pool. As a reminder, anyone can use that. So now let's have Olivia go and we don't have to take turns. We can go at any time. I could have Billy go multiple times and Olivia goes once and then Bailey go again and Olivia go twice more. It doesn't matter how you do it. But now that the room's clear, I'd, I will have Olivia join. So she'll move two spaces here. I want to do a breach and clear into this room. I want to set up a sabotage over here. Or not sabotage, an ambush from that spot. But I've got a little bit of time until the token gets here and we've got some other action. So I think what I want to do is I want to try to sabotage this camera. It's pointed the other way down the hallway, so it's not a huge threat to me, but it'd be nice to get it off the board so I don't have to worry about it. And if we're lucky, we take it out, we can get a Valor token, which I can show you what that does. Those are really, really nice to do. So this is gonna require an order. I want to improve our odds a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this as an order. That's what this symbol up here means to let me make some calculations. Search your deck for up to two science cards and place them into your hand. So this is, I could actually power to become free action but I don't have that token, that focus token. So that'll be my discard pile. But the ones I wanna grab is knowledge of power. So this will let me look through my deck a little bit. Not worried about that right now, but the other one I wanna grab, this is the one I want. Wait. Am I supposed to cut the green wire? Play before making a science check to add two more dice to your dice pool. So in order to do this, I need to do another order to do the actual sabotage. The sabotage requires a science test of four to do it. However, I'm gonna play this before making a science check to add two more dice to my dice pool. So I'm gonna have four plus the additional two for six. I'm also gonna refo to focus this one. Let's me recover one after resolving this science check. So what that means is I'm going to get back more of my tokens I spent. So let's go ahead and roll those six dice and see if we can't sabotage this camera. Here we go. That is an absolutely horrible roll. <laughs> oh no, that is garbage. Only two successes, but we're okay yet because you can always discard a card from your hand to reroll any dice. So I'm going to discard, hmm. Let me discard this duck and cover card and I can reroll the four blanks. So let's go ahead and do that and see if we can improve our odds a little bit with sabotage the camera. Okay, did it. Four successes, we got it. So now that the camera is looped, we flip it over so it's disabled. We don't have to worry about that camera anymore. Also, whenever you do a successful sabotage, you reach into the bag and draw a Valor token. So let's see what token we get. We're gonna get this one. This is gonna, can be spent later to add a dice to any check. That new Valor token we got can be added to the pool with our other one. 
The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Olivia move one more space right here. I'm not gonna have her open the door because if I do that, we'll have to deal with these blips becoming enemies. So I will end her turn right then. So now I wanna play this Knowledge of Power card. It is a free action. Don't need to spend any more tokens for that. But I would like to spend one of my fo science focus tokens to upgrade this roll. So normally I would roll four white dice, but one of those white dice will become a red die. Okay, so I need a science five check. I'm trying to see if it can manipulate my cards in my deck a little bit. That is pretty garbage. <laughs> so let's go ahead and discard another card to see if we can't improve our odds a bit. So I'm gonna discard a card, this right down the face card. Don't really need it right now. We'll reroll these two dice. So we need to get more successes. Let's see, oh my goodness, we're still short. However, I think we can still make it work. Olivia has this handy dandy data pad. As a reaction, we can exhaust this after making any check and discard a science card or focus token to add a success to the result. So I'm gonna discard this Your Math is Off card to exhaust it, add a success, that's five. We did it. So we get to look at the top five cards of our deck, discard any of them and put the rest back in any order. Now a reminder that Billy has a really cool ability in Sniper Scope. As a reaction, it says at the end of the operative phase, if there are no enemies within line of sight to you, go into Overwatch. So he is gonna be in Overwatch state. What that means is, as long as he doesn't move or do any other action, he can do a free attack in his, for his next action. Let's move on to the enemy phase. In the enemy phase, we do an alarm check. So we look and see if any enemies are in the surprise state. There are not. If they were, the alarm would be tripped. Then we do a portal token. We look for any portal tokens on the board. We don't have any of those. And then we do enemy movement step. In this case, the only patrol we have to worry about is this special patrol. He's gonna move one, two spaces right there. And then we activate any enemies that are aware. Fortunately, they don't know we're here yet, except for those unfortunate guys in the hallway, which we took care of. <laughs> okay, then we go into escalation phase. In this one, we would add any elite patrols, so really difficult guys, to the spawn pool. We'd spawn any blips. Right now, we don't have any blips in the spawn pool because currently we, we don't have any yellow patrol ones that appeared yet. And we do a cleanup, so any ongoing effects end. So that's gonna end the first round. Let's go into the refresh phase. So the first part of the refresh phase is we get to refresh all our cards. Refresh any cards that are exhausted and the support token, and then we recover three. Now you might be wondering that, well, I did four of these actions. I did a movement and some operations, but the nice thing is that card we did to do the, am I supposed to cut the green wire? Gave us recover one. So we were able to recover one of these immediately. So sometimes we can recover out of turn like that. Right now we've got three more tokens to recover. We have Olivia, she's all ready to go. I'll do the same for Billy, and then I have a choice to discard one card from my hand and draw up to five cards, and then we can go onto the threat phase. So I'll kind of do that and draw our threat card. Let's see what nice surprise we have in store for us now. We have Rapid Escalation. The on-point operative, which is currently Billy, must either discard a covert token or place two uh, investigation tokens on the escalation track. Fortunately, he does have a covert token, so we can get rid of that, prevent that from happening. Reminder that this top half happens if the alarm is not going off, and the bottom half happens if the alarm is going off. And then the on-point token will pass to Olivia, so she'll be the on-point character for the next round. And before I forget, let's go ahead and use the support token to give ourselves focus tokens. I'll give Olivia one of her science tokens back, and I'll give Billy that covert token he was so nice to discard for us. Okay, now we're set up for the breach and clear. So I'm going to do this ability. Go, go, go! As an order, an operative may kick open a door in their zone. Any enemies that can draw a line of sight to that door immediately become aware. Then each other operative within one zone may move to the zone on the other side of the door. I'm gonna have our scientists kick down that door. So Olivia spent an action to kick down that door. It is now open. Now we get to spawn these two tokens. The first card we get is spotter drone. So this is gonna spawn those drones. It says threat detected. Move the nearest investigation token within, this is two, because we're at threat level two, zones to the escalation track. One, two, so yes, this will get added to the escalation track. Place an overwatch token in this enemy's zone. That is horrible. Oh man, we're gonna deal with the attack right away. So let's go ahead and add this to the track and we'll come back to the board. So we add our first investigation token right here. We still got some spots, space to go, so it's not too bad yet. But I'm really worried about that spotter drones. <laughs> This is their card. They have spawned two drones in that spot. Attack for five, the tagging device. I can put a tracking device on someone. And then we have defense four, robotic. Immune to cyanics and negative conditions, except mark and immobilize. 
So they have four perception, which doesn't matter because they're de by default aware due to the go, go, go effect, two movement and one health each. Now, because it's an overwatch, this attack five is going to happen almost immediately. So go ahead and put those two spotter drones right here, and they're now in overwatch, which means they're going to do an attack as soon as they get the opportunity to, a free attack. Which is going to happen momentarily because we're going to have our sniper run in there, but let's finish the spawn for this point first. With that spawn, we get an enslaver. This is a live for me, spawn an additional thrall, and add it to this unit. So if you look at enslaver, it says spawn one plus two thralls, but we have to spawn an additional thrall, so we have to have three. And what's a thrall? If you look in the top here, this is Zethan. These are thralls, and you look at the lowest initiative thrall, and this is the Vormark Grunt. So we're going to add three of the Vormark Grunts with Enslaver. Now, he is a special ability we do need to keep track of. The Defense 4 says here, Even in death, you serve me. So, as a reaction, each time the Operative kills a thrall in the zone, they suffer one hit. So we really want to take him out first if we can, because his, his uh, thralls are going to protect him. In addition, the th Grunts do have motivated through fear. Their attack is actually five, because there's a Zethan in its zone. Okay, that's all spawned. Let's have our sniper run in there. And of course, they're surprised because they're aware of our presence in there. But before anything else happens, we do need to discard and resolve the overall effect from these drones. They were ready for us. So the spotted drones are going to attack us right away with the five attack, and we're going to have one plus two, where I have three dice to try to stop that five attack. Now, a quick note that our overwatch token was spent. We couldn't hang on to it because we didn't move into that area. So our overwatch doesn't matter, but theirs will. So let's see if we can stop this five attack coming at us. Okay, five attack, only three white dice. It's not looking too good. <laughs> okay, come on, dodge, dodge, dodge. Ooh, it's not half bad. That's something. Um, so we do, let's try to discard a card. I'm gonna discard a card from Olivia because you can do that when you're in, when they're a squad member. So I'll discard a card, and then I will go ahead and re-roll this white die, hoping for a pip. Come on, need a pip, need a pip. All right, there's a pip. So we did still fail. So we did fail that, but luckily Olivia's within one zone. We get to play, your math is off, and we'll go ahead and power this one. This is play after another operative within one zone, rolls and dice for any check, add one success for that roll. But if we powered it, add two instead. So I'll add the five he needed. He blocked the attack. Okay, let's go ahead and try to take out the enslaver. Now, normally you cannot do this. Because his initiative is four, you do have to start with the lowest initiative in a given zone and attack them first. But the sniper scope has the keyword accuracy. So that lets us choose any target we want. So I'm gonna go straight for the enslaver because that defense ability, when he deals his damage back, mm, don't like that. <laughs> he also has additional health. We got threat level two, so he actually has two health, not one. So we're gonna actually do the called shot once per round before making a non AOE attack. It is plus two. So this attack from his sniper normally does one. It's gonna do three. So that should be enough to take him out. To help this out, I am gonna discard one of these focus tokens to upgrade our roll. So that's gonna make it four white dice plus a red. So let's see if we can't take him out. I need to hit his four defense. Here we go. Let's see, one, two, oh, that's enough. One, two, three, four, five, got it. So that is gonna do his, his four defense for that. Oh, and of course, I should have just exhausted that to do a focus die to the roll, do it real quick. Oh, we get our, our attack back, that's excellent. Perfect. Okay, so then he is gone. And that was one of our actions. So one enslaver get down, a lot more guys to go. I think the next thing I wanna do is attack and throw a grenade right here. See if we can take out all those guys. Okay, I'd like to do another order with Billy. He's gonna use his concussion grenade. So we'll exhaust this and it says AOE range attack blast, which means we're gonna roll the dice once, apply the hit to every figure in that zone. So in this case, it is gonna be five dice because it adds one to additional four. And then they'll do one wound, make a noise and stun. Fortunately, these guys only have one wound, so this will also not only stun them, but take them out if we hit. Just go and exhaust that card, and come on. Gotta get four, gotta get four. Oh, look at that, that's awesome. That's five, that's enough to do it. So it's gonna take out all these guys in the zone, 
And then that blip is now removed, and that surprise is now a investigation token. We also get a valid token. We draw the walkie-talkie token. So what this does, this actually has a special effect. Wherever you, wherever you picked up from, we need to resolve a noise one check here, which is okay because we had to resolve a noise one check there anyway. What that means is we look one space, north, south, east, west, and, and in those directions, there's actually two spaces away. And if there's any green blips, they become yellow. Fortunately, there are none, so we don't have to do anything. This will be added to the Valor pool. Sometime later, we can then discard it to prevent a patrol from moving. However, this does not prevent the blue patrol from moving on this mission specifically. So unless we get a yellow patrol, this probably won't do much for us. Billy has been doing some real work here. Let's see if he can't take out one of these spotter drones, get some revenge from them attacking him. So we'll spend a third order to do this. And then I will actually also spend one of these focus tokens to upgrade this attack. So it'll be four dice plus one because we're using our gun. Now it's exhausted, but we can still use it. We just can't exhaust it for the focus die. So we'll be one down one token, but that's okay, because I think next round we'll get a free token anyway. So let's roll the dice and see if we can't get that four. Look at that, we've got five, we're good. That'll take out one of the drones. One drone down, one to go. Now, unfortunately, Billy's out of orders, but maybe our scientist can finish up the deal. She needs to take out that last drone. First thing she will do is she'll go ahead and move into this zone to be within range. And now let's see if she can't pull a trick out of her sleeve only has two attack dice. This is not great. Uh, I will definitely spend this token, focus token, to upgrade one of those dice into a red dice. And I also exhaust this to give her the focus die. So we're rolling these three, hoping we can get four. She really needs to take this last drone out. Come on, Olivia, you can do it. That is pretty horrible. <laughs> pretty, pretty horrible. Let's go ahead and discard a card from my hand to re-roll that. There we go, roll those dice. Three, that is also not enough, but we're okay. We can make it work. We still have her data pass, database uplink pad. We can exhaust this and I can discard a science card, which you definitely have. We have, I'm not a scientist. We can discard that card and then that will give us one more success. That's enough to take out the drone. That last drone is gone. This surprise because of investigation that gets discarded from play. Also, that was another unit, so we get another Valor token. We gain this token, which lets us heal. Also, let's not forget that focus token she gains at the end of that attack. She gains a Covert token. So the reason why I was discarding all those cards earlier is I wanted to grab this card. This is an upgraded card. I added it from a previous mission. Look, a shiny. This could draw a card from the Xenathan gear deck, place it in your undiscovered slot if able. But I really would love to power this up, so I'm going to use our wild focus token from the Valor pool to make this happen. So I'm going to instead look at the top three cards of the deck, place one in my undiscovered slot and discard the rest. So these are our three choices. Man, that phase flechette rifle looks awesome with the bleed, oh, rolling red dice, that's amazing. But I think because our sniper can do extra damage anyway at a single target, uh, this one's better for groups of targets. So I might just go for the plasma burst rifle because that would take out multiple targets at once. Also. Of course, there's a prototype, images are miss missing. There'll be images in the actual copy. So it's gonna take this plasma rifle. Now, we don't just get it right away, we have to discover it. Let me show you how that works. So how it works is we need to place this card up here in the discovery slot, way up here. If you notice how this number down here, the number four, that means sometime later, we need to do a science check and beat a test of four. When we do that, we now know how to use the, the alien weaponry, and then we can immediately equip it. And so either the scientist or whoever did the discovery test can equip it right away, or you can put it in your bag and give it to someone else later. But right now it's on a discovery slot. Now you can have a maximum three cards in the discovery slot and three cards in your bag. But unfortunately that requires an order and uh, she's, been, she's been doing a lot this turn, so she's gonna take a break. <laughs> that will end our turn. And luckily our sniper is gonna be in overwatch mode because there's no enemies in the spot. There is an armory down here. We can get lots of great gear, but I don't know if we have time for it <laughs> because we have to go through the rest of the phases right now. So the enemy phase, we check to see if anybody's surprised, nothing. But a portal token, nothing there. Enemy movement, here he comes. And the scientist right there. Next turn, they'll be right in front of the door. So we're gonna try and ambush him outside that door. Okay, no aware enemies attack. And we do the escalation. So there's no elites that we need to worry about because the alarm's not going off, nothing to spawn. 
and we can go back into the cleanup and refresh phase. Let's go and resolve our threat card and see what it is. We get Cyprobe. Each operative must either discard a defense focus token or discard a number of cards equal to the threat level. So we have to each discard two cards. Oh man, attacking our mental capabilities. <laughs> That's not great. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is do the support action. I'll give Olivia a science token and give our sniper an attack token. And I know that card made us discard cards, but I think that's okay because I don't plan to do a whole lot this turn. I mostly just want to prepare. And then the nice thing is if I don't do anything with the sniper, he'll stay in overwatch and he'll be ready to go as soon as that enemy pops in that spot. So we really want to get this plasma burst rifle online. So let's go ahead and do a discovery check. So we need a science check, so it's gonna be four dice. We need a four or higher, but I'm going to spend this science token to increase that odds to upgrade one of those dice. That discovery action is in order, so let's go ahead and roll these dice. Come on, need a four, need a four. Excellent, two plus two, four, we got it. So let's go ahead and immediately equip that, and we'll put this, knife, this uh, pistol into the bag. So this is a two-handed weapon, we have to put it right there. I like that. Now we're rocking and rolling. We do draw a token for that successful discovery and we get a free weapon. Oh, awesome. Let's go ahead and get rid of that right now. Let's get a free weapon. So our sniper's pretty well stocked. We've got some space for our scientists to do some stuff. So she'll take this one. And this happened to be an upgrade, a thermal scope. Upgrade any ranged weapon. Special attacks with the attached weapon gain accuracy. Excellent. So now we can ignore the initiative order. Also says here as a reaction says, use before making an attack with the attached weapon. If lights out condition is in effect, the attack does extra damage. Uh, there's some opportunities where you can like find a control box and sabotage it, so you shut down the lights in the whole facility, but that won't happen in this mission, so we can ignore that. It's just gonna add accuracy to this plasma burst rifle. And then I wanna do one more movement. I wanna do a take cover. When you take cover, you move your figure to the edge of a zone, and then that means they are, get concealment and cover bonus. So any type of stealth check, I'll get two automatic success. Any type of attack, I will get two automatic defense as long as I'm in that spot. If I move out of that zone, I lose my concealment and cover. I will actually do one more order with Olivia. I'm gonna put her into Overwatch as well. So she'll be in cover and in Overwatch, ready to go. So let's move on to the rest of the turn. We have enemy phase. So we're going to check the alarm. So there's no one surprised, no portals to worry about and enemy movement. So the enemy is gonna move two spaces, one, two, and now, we have line of sight. Let's pause the game and spawn that enemy. Look at the special rules for this mission. We spawn Razion, the mind killer. So that's this big bad guy. <laughs> oh man. He has health equal to three plus the, the current threat times three. So he's gonna have a total of nine health. That's crazy. And he's immune to stun. So he's gonna be really hard to take down. In addition, we do also spawn with two Grunts, because it's one, sorry, not grunts, I'm sorry, two of the Vormark grunts per operative. So this is the unit we have to deal with. And we could do a stealth check, but honestly, we're in Overwatch mode, both of us, so we're gonna make a free attack. So they're just gonna be surprised. Surprised that we're going to shoot them around the corner. Now, one thing to keep in mind is with this door, whenever you shoot through a door, the enemies or the figures on the other side get an automatic cover bonus. Now, Olivia's already in cover. She doesn't get the, the bonus twice, but I kind of wanted to show you what that action did for this playthrough. Let's have Olivia go first. So what this plasma rifle does, AOE range attack burst times two. What that means is if you have burst, that means you can tar hit two targets with a single roll. Burst times two means you can hit three targets with a single roll. So she is gonna attack all three of those figures in that space with this plasma burst rifle. She also gets accuracy, so she could target any of them if she wanted, but it really doesn't make a difference right now. But the important thing is we're gonna make one single roll and compare that to five defense and four defense for these units. I'm hoping she can take out all the grunts because right now they're motivated through fear and they have a high attack. <laughs> I kind of want it to be nice to only deal with the mind killer. Also, the mind killer has a special ability called hallucination. When an operative targets this enemy with an attack, which is happening right now, they must discard a focus token or the attack is canceled. So Olivia will discard her covert focus token to make sure this attack happens. But Olivia actually has a trick up her sleeve being the scientist. She's not just a scientist. She's gonna be playing this card. Make an attack that gains a white die. 
So she could do this as part of her free attack with the Overwatch. So if this attack is with a Zethian weapon, which it is, this attack gains a red dice instead. So she's going to roll four whites and a red, and she needs to try to hit either the five defense, which is really a seven due to cover, or four, which is really a six due to cover. Okay. Um, oh man, I would love to be able to do this effect, to do extra damage, but uh, I don't have the tokens. It just, it's just not going to happen. So we will, because I had to discard some tokens. That's okay. I think trying to take them all out, doing some damage is worth it. Here we go, roll the dice, see what she gets. She got two, three, four, five. That's pretty good. Five. It's not enough to hit what I need to hit. He needed a six. I'll go ahead and discard a card, a science card, and I need to use my database uplink pad, I've not used that yet, to give an automatic success. So that will make it into what we need, a six. Not enough to hit the mind killer, unfortunately, but enough to hit the grunts, and that's okay. She's gonna take out all those grunts in one attack. So those grunts are gone. The downside to this attack, it does generate noise, and there is a patrol marker right here that is gonna hear that noise and wants to go investigate. So they're gonna start moving in the near future. Okay, that was her free attack. Let's go ahead and do the sniper's free attack. Okay, we're going to exhaust his weapon to get a focus die. We're going to get rid of this token to get past hallucinations. And we're going to get rid of this attack to upgrade one of the dice. So it's going to be four white dice, a red, and a focus die. We need a five because his laser sight ignores cover. Just need a five. There we go. Awesome. Four, five, six, and he gets a science token which he doesn't need, but he can at least discard that for the hallucinations. So one, two, three, three wounds on him. He has six left. It's gonna be tough getting through them, but we're getting close. That's a good start, good start. Okay, we're done with our Overwatch attacks, our free attacks. Let's move on to the rest of the phase. Now each aware enemy will activate in initiative order. So this is our only aware enemy. He's gonna attack. Okay, we're gonna have the Mind Killer attack Olivia. Now, the Mind Killer will attack the nearest, and then he'll attack the most wounded. But those are both tied, so we can make a choice. So we're gonna attack Olivia. She has two dice normally, plus two from the armor, so four, but she's also in cover because he's shooting her through the door, so we get cover as well. So she has four dice plus two success, needs to stop that seven attack. <laughs> oh no! Whoa, that's a really good roll. Let's see, three, four, five, plus two. Oh, that's perfect, the seven. That's just enough to stop the attack. Wow, lucky, lucky roll. So now we do the escalation, spawn step, and cleanup step, which effectively does nothing right now. And then we'll do the refresh and recover. We'll draw our hand size, and now we do the threat card. Let's see what it is. Motion detection, the on-point operative, which is Billy, may discard a covert focus token. If they don't, each time they move into a new zone this round, place an investigation token in that zone. Oh no, it's got a motion tracker on him. Well, I don't think our sniper's gonna be moving much. So I think he just wants to sit still and try to take out that big bad. Okay, let's have Billy do the first attack. So he will discard this to avoid hallucinations, discard this to increase his chance of hitting and he'll do called shot again. So we'll do Upgrade that die. We'll exhaust this for a focus. So it's gonna be our normal four dice plus upgrade dice plus a focus. We need that five. This will do another three wounds to him if this is successful. Okay, here we go. First attack. We got one, two, three, four, five, and a science token, which is fine. So that is another hit for three more damage. It's got six of nine damage on him. Getting close, getting close. We need, can we do it? <laughs> we need three more hits. We're gonna exhaust the support token to give them both atta focused attack tokens. So now Billy will attack again with one of his actions. He will discard that, that science token. Okay, and he'll roll his five dice. He's not gonna upgrade this one because we need to do more damage and I don't, I'm not sure we can make it happen. So we we'll roll our five dice. We need to get a five or higher. We need to do two more damage to him. Here we go, come on. All right, look at that. Three, four, four, oh, we got six. That's another wound to him. And then Billy will try it one more time and discard his attack focus token to get past hallucination. And this is his last attack. See if he can do it a second time. 
Whoa, Billy's on fire. That is awesome. Another five. That's another hit. That's going to put the Mind Killer up to eight. We need one more to take him out. It's all up to our scientist. To improve our odds, I think she's going to spend a movement to go ahead and run into that spot. Because this way, he will not get the cover bonus. <laughs> and luckily, our weapon does shoot at zero range. Okay, with this at order, I'm going to play I'm not just a scientist. Because I've been saving this for this reason. If this attack, make an attack that gains a white die. If this attack is with a Zethan weapon, which it is, attack gains a red dice instead. So we're going to gain two plus a native two attacks. That's four white dice plus this from red dice. And I have to discard her last focus token to get through the hallucinations. This has to hit. <laughs> this has to hit. We have to get our five defense, luckily, because we're in the same zone, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Come on, Olivia, for the win, for the kill. Whoa, yeah, she got it. No problem. That is how you do it. With all that scientific training, she took out the big alien. So we can move the wounds from the area here. The patrol marker is, doesn't get removed because this is the scientist in this case. We do get to flip this to investigation. Okay, so that's excellent. Now we need to rescue the scientist. He's been subdued, but he cannot move on her own. She needs to be picked up. So we need to spend an action to pick her up and then every movement while we're carrying her, we can only move one space. So instead of the normal two, we can only move one. But before we do that, don't forget, we do get to draw valid tokens. And because that was elite unit, we draw two valid tokens. We draw another of these uh, false radio leads. So the nice thing is a noise one check here doesn't change the board state any. So add that to our pool. And then we also get this card, which lets every opera draw a card. We'll go ahead and end the turn. Billy will go into overwatch state, but I don't think it's gonna matter too much. We just have to get out of here now. Had to get the extraction point, which is north of our position. So luckily we took out the last enemy. So the alarm check fails. There's no surprise enemies. The, no portals to worry about. Enemy movement. They will move, and this patrol is going to move two spaces. He's going to move out here and will see us. But we have a trick up our sleeves. We'll use that false radio communication to valid token to stop them from moving. Give them false orders. Okay, then we have to worry about enemy activation. No one's aware of us. We skipped that. Nothing about escalation, fortunately. No spawn. Refresh. And start the round again. Move on to the threat phase. After refreshing, we get... Losing focus. Each operative must discard a focus token. Well, joke's on you. We don't have any focus. We already lost it. So luckily nothing else happens here. So Billy will do a movement action to move one, two. He'll open this door. Then he'll do another movement action, move the extraction point. And then the scientist, Olivia, will spend an order to pick up the, the other scientists. Because scientists help each other. And then she has three or two more movement points she can move one with one of them and one for the other one. And that is a win. We escaped with the scientists and rescued them before they left. Great job, team. The recovery of Dr. Rebus will be a huge asset to our cause. She's poised to provide huge insight into the enemy's operations, including the nature of the portal technology they use to skip through space, as she calls it, and how it all operates. However, in order to give us the intel we need on this, she will need her research, which is Unfortunately located in a secure enemy facility. So can you guess what your next mission is going to be? Yep, you guessed it. And here the brass was just saying you weren't that smart. Way to prove them wrong. Oh, speaking of being not smart. Bravo team, totally botched the mission at the weapons factory. Apparently they thought it would be cute to grab the unknown alien weapons and start shooting them off. Not shooting them at any enemies, mind you. They were all dead already. They just started shooting them off for fun. Needless to say, things weren't as fun as they expected. I believe the term catastrophic explosion of idiotic proportions was used during the debriefing. Apparently the Vortmark were able to take the factory back after Bravo team finished hospitalizing each other. So that's less than ideal. Anyway, Bravo team is looking for new members if you know anyone. So now we will gain one tactics card so we can level up our deck. And then we have consequences. So due to Bravo's team's failure, we have to add Empower Weapons Special Condition card to the Condition deck. Then we proceed to the next mission. That's going to end this playthrough. Hang tight for my first impressions. So first off, I really like this game. Earth Under Siege is fantastic. It's a lot of fun to play. It is a very deep tactical experience. If you're looking for something tactical, a lot of engagement. There's a lot of moving pieces in this game. 
from the strategy you choose on the outset. If you want to choose, like, for example, I want to do Black Ops. Huh? Let's try something stealth. Let's cut the power, go into it. Or, you know what, maybe I want to sabotage this time. And then deciding, looking at each map, trying to figure out where you want to approach it, what strategy you want to take as a team, that is very engaging, and it definitely has a huge impact on the game. Because as you're playing through the game, if you have a mistake in your play, if you do run into a bad strategic plan, it can turn poor. <laughs> because once that alarm starts ringing and those enemies start coming, it gets rough real fast, but it's fun. So this is a very deep thematic tactical experience for sure. I try to show you as much as I can in this playthrough. There's a lot more in the game box. So honestly, go check out the Kickstarter page. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comments below and we'll try to help you out. And the designer's been very engaging on this game. Now, it is a fun tactical experience. That is a huge pro for this. If you want something very deep and thematic. The contest, you might not like this game if you don't like a rules heavy game, because this is definitely a heavy game. The rule book is well laid out, I would say. There's, but there's a lot of rules in there. There's a lot of, oh yeah, what happens when I do a sabotage? Do I get a valid token? What's the test for that? Now, some of these things are being addressed with some more iconography to help with like your components on the game. For example, like the, the camera system. They has a, a indicator for what the perception test is for that game, for that component, but not for what do you do to sabotage it. So that's gonna be added to the game. So of course, things will change in the end. But basically, seek out this game if you want a deep thematic tactical experience and maybe avoid it if you don't want a really heavy game with a lot of overhead to achieve that, that, that tactical experience. But for me, I really enjoy this play. I do recommend checking this one out. This one's a lot of fun, and but I love my stealth games, so this was a good one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next stop. Bye-bye.